The new UK themed region pack for City Skylines 2 features what seems to be the single most requested thing right now. A low density single family detached housing zone complete with a variety of beautiful houses. Now it features five additional zones as well as a handful of great looking signature and service buildings so we should be pretty well equipped for this UK inspired city build. Now for our map pick I've been fortunate enough to get early access to the Holyhead UK map by Poplar Ponderosa so we'll go with that. It's based on a real location in Wales which I thought would be pretty fitting. The city name is going to be West Bryn, which is a bit of an odd combination of something English and Welsh, but I figured it was pretty fitting. Theme is going to be European, obviously. We're going for left-hand traffic for that authentic feel and so that you guys can laugh at my confusion when trying to map out the road layout. And then we're unlocking everything so we get access to all the juicy stuff from the pack right from the get-go. Oh man, isn't this beautiful? If there's two things I really appreciate in a great map, it's when the starting infrastructure is super realistic and you can just start building, and when tree lines have been utilized to create what indicates rural farmland. And this map obviously have both, so we're ready to just dig right in. So here's to a controversial start. One, I'm going to use the French themed train station in this British themed build. And then I'm gonna follow it up with a friendly reminder to like this video if you enjoy my content as it provides engagement. Now the reason I'll be using the fringe themed station is that there isn't any train station in the UK themed pack and I think the historical central station is just going to be too big for the type of build we'll be doing here. So I am just going to make sure the game is paused and then I'm just gonna free place this right alongside this bay right here. Yank. Now speaking of the type of build, my idea is that we're gonna go for a really posh, maybe slightly snobby uh, little village with some beautiful houses and cultural institutions. It's somewhere you want to move if you have the money for it at the very least. I don't want to build something massive here. I really want to, you know, kind of capture that cottage vibe that is uh, so it feels so quintessential British. I don't know if it is because I'm not British myself, but that's kind of what I associate with the best that UK has to offer at very least. Uh, so we're going to do a very quick and easy train connection here to the existing tracks. And then I was contemplating actually removing this track entirely with the better bulldozer mod because I don't want four tracks at the train station. But what I think we're going to do instead is we will have a bit of industry here. Some form of high paying industry that makes this area extra lucrative. So what I think we'll do is I'm going to continue the train tracks uh, so that it just looks like an industrial, like a freight rail bypass that isn't actually a part of the station. That's the general idea, at least, uh, because the... Uh, it can be a bit wonky if you remove sub-elements, as the warning message on the screen currently tells me, so I guess I better not take the chance. So after starting my British build with a French train station, I think it's only fair we get something real nice from the UK pack placed as soon as possible. So I like to go in to find it, and then we'll open up the filters panel here. And I like to just select the United Kingdom pack because that's going to give us an overview of everything in here, starting with the signature buildings, moving on to sonables, and then uh, our service buildings. But I'm going to restrict this uh, showcase a little further by actually moving into the buildings tab. And then we have sub tabs so we can see exactly what we've got in each category. Now, something that's really cool in this pack, besides the low density zoning themes, are the service buildings. Most of these are pretty ordinary, at least the category they fit in, except for this one, because we've been asking for churches for a long time, and we've got a real cool one in this new pack. So I have created a small artificial hill upon the hill up here so that our church can have a really high, beautiful vantage point, And we're just going to place that as the first UK building, which I think would be pretty fitting because obviously the structure here is very, very old. I would say the main structure could be like maybe not a thousand years old, maybe 800 or 900 years. 
actually i don't know i'm not a church expert uh but i think the location here is very very fitting uh, a cool thing with this little church here is that the graveyard is actually uh, expandable so you can do one on either side and uh, i mean let's just go all out and get that done because there's like a little opening here in the stone wall which is uh, perfect so there you have it we have a proper uk building placed and since we already have these wonderful service buildings filtered for us, I think we need a prestigious boarding school for rich Londoners to send their spoiled kids. Uh, and we need to provide a view as well. It's not like this map needs a lot of terraforming, I wouldn't say that. But I think if we just add what looks a little like a natural cliff formation here, there are plenty of those on the more northern sides of the map. I, I don't know if that, if that is north. I'm just saying things currently. I just need like a little podium basically to place this prestigious school. So I think I'll align it where the main building faces the water and we'll just bring a small alley road in front like this. Obviously, we need a, an appropriate name. So this will be the Westbrin School of Wizardry. And of course, the school comes with some beautiful upgrades. Both are in the shape of extra classrooms, but why make it any more complex? We'll add both to really make this building stand out. We're going to start mapping out the road layout now, and we're going to use custom road builder roads extensively, starting with this village two lane road, which I kind of want to create sort of a village ring road that more or less defines like the urban extent of Risperin. Uh, we'll start with a simple upgrade of the road we have down here in place. And then we'll uh, add a, a road type that has sidewalks to the train station. And we'll have a few roads with actual sidewalks in like the city center. But otherwise, we're going to pretty quickly revert to these more rural type of roads. Uh, so I just need a basic road in front of the train station as a starter that has some sidewalks and a bit of street parking. Maybe only parking on one side of the road, actually. And I think this one that I've used in Bergtal might be a good fit. So we'll just add that in front of the station and have some parking on the opposite side of the station so that you can easily enter the dedicated parking for the station. And I think I don't want to bring that any further down, actually. So we're going to grab our village road once more. And just get a connection going and i probably need to disable snapping so that i can make this connection as seamless as possible and then we'll just bring that out in a small straight segment and then use snapping to create that connection and then we'll have to move all the way across the shoreline here move up north which is i guess this might be yeah it doesn't matter what north is <laughs> <laughs> what matters is that I get this road layout down. So uh, once again, disable snapping so that we can get the alignment as close as possible here. And we'll enable contour lines because while it may not be obvious, this area is actually quite hilly, uh, which is great. It's going to be a little harder to build a town or village rather, but it's going to look more idyllic when it's actually done, which is after all what we're going for. I have constant slope enabled so that for much of this, the, the, the terrain is going to have to conform to the road and not the other way around. And I actually might disable that because this is like a relatively small road. So I would rather just have a bit of wobbliness. And then it's my job to try and follow the contour lines as best as po possible. So the wobbliness doesn't get too crazy. And this is not going to be like the main access road to the uh, mini Hogwarts we have here. I'm going to use a small alley for that. So we're just going to move behind it, actually. And we'll have to move up the hill to create the type of ring road I had envisioned. Move through here. We'll probably break off with a road moving in this direction because I need some rural farmlands to surround the town as well. And as I look at the ring road, we'll definitely have some rural farmlands within this as well, because I'm not building a major city here. Just building a small, uh, hopefully romantic, cozy town. So let's just bring this down. And I think as long as we can keep ourselves under 10 degrees 
of uh, slope tolerance, then that's fine. All right, let's have a little look. Pretty good start, and we might get our connection to the school now. And for this one, we're going to keep things simple. Use the vanilla alley. I think that is probably going to be a good fit, but I don't want to like have it straight right in front of the school. We can add a bit of a bit of a bend. We'll use some custom surfaces out here anyways to detail up this school and the, the school grounds. So, so that's really not much of a concern currently. We'll use snapping just as we depart from this road. And then we're maybe just going to make this one a little more interesting, actually. Follow the coastline a little closer. Uh, we could have some beautiful old historic houses here, since we have a good option to choose from. And uh, it's obviously a prime location. Uh, I'm going to do a little modification, actually. I'm going to change the road here a key a bit, because this village road uh it's actually kind of wide so while i kind of want that to be the ring road of the town uh, then when we move out here i'm going to use a much narrower uh, rural road so uh, what i think i'm do gonna do is i'm just gonna make sure that the church has connection and then i'm going to define the like urban center of the town a little better actually using this village road and then we'll upgrade these to a narrower high speed road uh, that has uh, that is just not as wide at all because this one is actually there's lots of like pedestrian space here even though it doesn't have dedicated sidewalks so if we get this connection going and maybe we'll just add one more that kind of moves its way up the hill and connects there then if i move into highways i have these custom narrow two-lane two-way national roads Ugh, it's a bit of a mouthful uh, but i think transitioning to those uh to kind of better define the town uh, would be a pretty good idea so i'm gonna disable snapping for this and just mark all the segments that i expect to upgrade and then i'm gonna do the manual alignment as well as i can at least oh oh it wants to upgrade all that well i certainly don't want that so let's just start with this segment here and see how far we can move without encountering any issues so I can at least upgrade to a down here and just kind of try and center that as much as possible. And then I can upgrade this segment in the very same fashion. And that's more like it. And obviously we'll need to upgrade this one, but in this case the alignment isn't as important. Yoink. And as I zoom in here, you can kind of see the, the difference. There's quite a bit difference in the width, which where this one really is more fitting for like a small rural town wipe. And this one is much more, you know, long drive through a super rural low density community. At least I hope that makes a bit of sense. I've added in a few additional of these uh, two lane highways just kind of branching out from the town. And we can now much better add a little definition of the uh, of the heart of Westbrin as we just mark up this area right here. And we can of course adjust this, and the train station is naturally a part of it, uh, as well I guess is the actual church. And we have Westbrin. As we take an additional look at the wonderful buildings in this pack, there are some fantastic signature buildings that we are obviously going to find use for but more importantly as far as the town center goes there is a dedicated mixed use theme and it consists of these mixed residential buildings but we also have these uh, differently named town center shops all of these are wonderful there are some particular levels uh, especially that i am uh, that i'm going to be going for here so with this type of building Something I need to do is adjust the road layout to best fit the vibe we're going for, which means that we're going to have a very, very small, uh, you know, street or road layout here in the center of West Britain. We're going to have really narrow, small uh, streets at odd angles. It's not going to be a strict, regular grid so that we can fit in buildings that are about two to three zoning tiles deep, but not any bigger than that. So to start off, I might use this EU very narrow two lane road I also created for my German series. Uh, we're going to disable snapping because I don't want 90 degree angles. I'm not going to be zoning as you guys could probably guess by now. I'll move up and then we'll just move out here and do one connection. 
and then I might pick another street entirely to just kind of break this up and make it into smaller blocks that is more fitting. As you guys can see, this is about four zoning tiles deep. Obviously, the zoning is completely wonky because the game hates when you don't adhere to the grid. But in our case, like I said, it really doesn't matter. We'll build, uh, we'll build our ideal city or town rather. Uh, we'll add a small lane here with a bit of parking on the side and basically just continue mapping out this small, very cozy street layout. Alright, so we've got an initial road layout going and I think this little area here is going to correspond pretty well with the overall scale of the, you know, actual village of Westbrin. So I kind of want to just dive in and place a bunch of buildings because as far as utilities go, there are no specific utility buildings as part of this pack. So that's not going to be as interesting. We'll do that uh, a little later before I unpause the game, of course. Uh, but here is uh, something to just be aware of when you start plopping down these buildings or even when you start zoning them. The, uh, we're going to sort for UK and go to mixed use. Uh, these are all wonderful assets, but as far as I can tell, there are no dedicated corner lots here. So something you might want to do is mix in buildings from vanilla or some of the other themes. Or alternatively, what you can do is sort for residential and then... Uh, specify medium density and then if you go down to the bottom here or whatever you uh, have to do to find the uh, terraced houses where are they why am i oh i have another thing here i need to remove sorry about that and then if you move all the way down here you will find that the terraced theme actually has a bunch of corner buildings at least two probably with some prop variations due to different levels so what I'm going to start doing is actually just place a few of these. I don't necessarily need a dedicated corner building at every possible corner lot. I don't mind a bit of randomness. I think this is pretty realistic and we find this in real uh, real life villages and cities as well. Uh, but I definitely do want a few of them because, you know, it's going to look odd if every single corner is uh, some sort of empty lot or... Uh, you know, a um, building that doesn't really make a lot of sense or something like that. So, just going to place a few of these just to get us going. Yank. Now, before we jump straight into the mixed use, I just want to check if some of these signature buildings have corner lots as well. Uh, because we have a bunch of wonderful signature buildings I really want to use. So, we have the Heath Pub with a terrace. Quite a sizable asset we have a smaller version where it's just a lo uh, a lounge sorry <laughs> and then we have a version which is basically just a nice little corner building without any specific additions so uh, i think i'm gonna add the lounge version and probably see if i can get away with squeezing in uh, the very same pop here uh, i wonder if i can actually remove some of the signage with better bulldozer i don't think i can which oh actually i can it looked like i can, could remove something i can remove the antenna here <laughs> uh, but otherwise i think that's fine i don't really mind also they have different colors so i guess that kind of works um the five star hotel i'm going to add a little bit out of the city but we do have the church in and bistro and once again we have a couple of different size versions of this one uh, so i think i'm going to add this one as well now, could that do at a corner lot, despite not being a corner building, is a good question. I think I'm going to try it, since it looks pretty nice. And we can add some graffiti or a mural to the side here. And then as we have a look, we have the Fox Inn. Once again, three different versions, different sizes. And I might even want to try and add that as a corner building as well. 
Uh, so I might want to try and add it here. Yank, and we'll see just how that works. Uh, it kind of breaks things up a little bit. You don't have to do this, obviously, if you don't want to. I don't really mind. I don't I don't really mind. I think it adds a bit of randomness, and I kind of like that. I think I'm going to do that very same uh, thing by adding the slightly larger version of the church in and bistro, uh, as that's going to take up the entirety of this end of this block here. I'm just going to align it like this. Then you have parking that is... <laughs> I was just about to say the parking is easily accessible, but of course, then I actually look at the terrain up here. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can salvage this uh, a little bit. I probably can't because the building is also forcing some changes to the to the terrain. Um, yeah, we're probably just going to add in some bushes and whatnot to kind of cover this up. But I don't mind that it isn't placed and at an entirely flat area because I mean, this is kind of hilly, right? Actually, I might move that, but I'm just, I'm, I want to stick with it right now, at least. Anyways, we've got a bunch of the awesome signature buildings in place. Let's move into these mixed buildings. Now, I may have underestimated the size of some of these a bit, because if we restrict it to two zoning tiles deep, it's actually a pretty limited amount of uh, assets we have available. Move up to three, we get a little more uh, variety. Bump it up to four and it seems like we get the, the full nine yards. So uh, I'm probably going to have to just be kind of creative and see how I can fit some of these in and maybe have a row house at the back or do you, you know, maybe not have anything at the back and add that extra bit of randomness in there. Uh, we'll see. I'm going to reduce the, uh, the zoning tile diff to two and we'll add in a few of these just to see how they mix in and look. Actually, let's go to free. We definitely have space for that. Uh, and these are obviously be beautiful and they fit in really well with the rest. They're not the exact style as this in, for instance, this in that has this or a pop, whatever this was with this timber look, but it still looks kind of old and nice. So I think we have the bulk of the quote-unquote urban core of West Spring completed now. And I ended up mixing a few different zones. And right after this little showcase, we need to fix our utilities because people are certainly not all that happy, which I, I fully understand. Anyways, as a little tour, I mixed a host of different mixed-use buildings together here alongside what I guess we could consider the main street, which also faces the train station. So what you'll see is that uh, some of these slightly wider mixed-use lots uh, have actually just been spliced together with other assets to create a more uh, unique look, and I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, as we move a bit further back, 
Uh, we still have some shops uh, on these smaller roads back here, but the amount of shops and, and pops kind of decrease a bit as we move quote unquote further away from the main street, although this is all on a, on a micro scale, of course. Uh, but we, what we do see is more, uh, you know, different zoning types. So this is medium density terraced housing. This is medi medium density semi detached housing. And over here we have actual uh, detached housing, two of them, in fact. So I'm just trying to mix it up. We even have a vanilla building here that I actually thought was a, a decent fit. Uh, and something I really want to highlight with this pack, besides it being seven gigabytes of goodiness, uh, which is wonderful in its own right, is the prop work that the two creators have managed to pull off. I mean, the usage of surfaces and props, fences, hedges and bushes and whatnot is just fantastic. Obviously, working on <laughs> working on hilly terrain, uh, you will have your fair share of issues. But that's why I've been using uh, the Bella Boulder so much. Just get rid of some of the stuff that is... Uh, probably not going to look all that great and then we'll just add in a few trees and whatnot and that's just going to make up for it hopefully now don't worry we'll of course do lots of detailing we have a lot of surfaces here that i need to be fixing and adding custom surfaces that's not an issue with the pack it's probably because because these buildings are placed near my custom road builder roads i'm not even sure i have a single vanilla road in here uh no we have the the alley here but that's about it so i'll be adding a ton of detailing it's gonna look real nice i have no doubt uh, but obviously there's a few issues on the screen currently and i think as far as electricity goes uh wind turbines is probably going to be just fine for this uh, this particular build here let's have a look at how windy hole here it is i mean this is in the uk it's supposed to be windy and rainy right <laughs> very funny I'm from Denmark, so I can make rain jokes. It's even worse here. Uh, anyways, it's quite a windy map, especially like this peninsula here of the island is super windy. So uh, although I don't think I'll actually be placing wind turbines up here because it's also a pretty beautiful natural feature. It's kind of hilly and we have the uh, we have some beautiful cliffs over here, uh, which you can't see because I'm moving around with this ugly overlay. Uh, but uh, if we move down here, we have plenty of road connections. We are uh, a decent stretch away from Westbrin, uh, and we don't have full, uh, full-blown wind here. But it's it's pretty close, I would say. So let's just get, uh, let's start by just placing a couple of these, maybe just three on a line. Can I get this to four megawatts? I can't. So I'll just place three of these, and then try to frame them with uh, these uh, dirt roads here. So uh, I have an idea that I've used in other series as well. I'm going to enable Anarchy, then I'm going to move in here and I'm going to add in a roundabout, a custom roundabout I've created that doesn't really have anything in the middle. And then I'm just going to move that to the base of the, uh, of the windmill. Uh, it's a very small thing. I wouldn't say I I haven't patented it at all. I'm probably not the first one to do it, uh, but I just kind of like it. I think it it works it works pretty well. So we'll just add that one in there, and then obviously we need the the final one. We can add a bit of an interesting shape to this one, and get the roundabout added. And that did not work because I'm messing up the notes now. So I guess we'll just branch off from the little attachment we do have and bring that in so all i gotta check is uh, whether we have full power connections all the way to whispering i think that's the case because these are alleys oh no we have a we have a segment here where it's going to break uh so i think i'm gonna use some electrical power cables uh just due to the like aesthetic they add and i may as well just branch off here and then just try and follow this uh the A55 North Wales Expressway, I assume. And that's another really cool thing with this map by Popular Ponderosa. Many of the uh, roads, some of the rural roads, are also named in accordance to the, the real life and names they have. Uh, which is just that kind of attention to detail that makes this map, as well as other high detail maps, uh, a real pleasure to work with. 
Uh, so this should work. Next on is water. We have plenty of groundwater reservoirs, so I think we're just gonna use one of these. And I mean, if we could use one that is also near our power generation, then I think things are just tying up really nicely together. Uh, I guess if I was playing with like an actual economy, I probably wouldn't opt for this solution just due to the to the cost. But I'm, I mean, I'm not, so I think we can we can splurge. Uh, just to make sure that we don't have to mess with uh, water supply anymore in this uh, in this video here. Uh, this should work fairly well. Uh, pretty confident though that we're not connected. We probably uh, we need to connect the highway stretch over here. Uh, so crowding a, a great man. We as the uh, water lines underneath underneath the roads where they belong and then sewage. Uh, this is a uh, it's so annoying having to use this massive water treatment plant. I would have really liked uh, uh, an option by now for a smaller solution instead of just dumping the poop water uh, straight into the <laughs> into the open water because that's obviously going to look like crap uh, uh, very quickly. So I really don't want to use that solution. So um, we're just going to use the expensive water treatment plant. But I guess that's going to add some jobs as well. So yeah. Uh, I think that's fine. We'll add this in. Do we need uh, an extension just for it to look better? Add that there with some freeform placement and then adding in uh, a few paths. I'm now detailing this up, which I really, really shouldn't be doing. I don't have don't have the time to do this. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is my uh, this is my sin, I guess. So I'm adding paths to this water treatment plant without uh, having a good reason for it. There you have it. Now we are ready to hit play. And for those of you that regularly watch my content, you know this is like a 50-50 whether it actually worked or I missed something. Ah, <laughs> make that 60-40. I think I've caught the very first private vehicle moving into Whispering. And pretty fittingly for the UK, it's a tuned hatchback. Might be like a golf free with uh, like an extra loud exhaust or something. Uh, let's go to first person camera and just follow their journey into Westbrin and just, oh my goodness, this is beautiful. Oh, we're turning left. I wonder which property these people bought. And it's always good with some first person views just to see where you really messed up elevation. Okay, so we're parking here. Uh, I gotta catch the citizen now. Let's see. Uh, I think it's these two that exited the vehicle. So we've got Mercia Holloway and Pauline Holloway. So let's just see. They're moving to 178 Fawn Street. Which is right here. Ah, mixed use. So they will be living on top of a... Ah, this is probably a bank of some sort, I imagine. Now, what if you wanted to commute to town by train? Well, we obviously need an actual rail yard for that. And this time around, I'm gonna give one of the custom rail yards on PDX Mods another try. Because I, I, I don't want to place this beefy vanilla one once more. Uh, and as a cool upgrade, uh, Tigon's rail infrastructure pack now has its own pack logo so that we can filter. So I'm going to try and see if I can get one of the uh, small train depots to actually work. Uh, there's a couple of different versions here. Medium rail depot long. Dispatch and maintenance of trains has a capacity of six trains and is one directional only. But I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't mind having a track through, which this one does, because we should be able to place it. Let's see how the elevation is here. Ah, uh, it's actually decently hilly, uh, but I think we'll manage uh, if I place it close enough. I should be able to just get it connected uh, pretty simply. So I think I want to add it here because then we might get a small, very small industrial area going out here as well. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm terrible at it, aligning stuff. I apologize. 
we'll just uh i selected it would move it and then control h then i can align it to the height of like a segment or a node i just pick this segment because i think that would be uh, the most fitting uh very very nice and then we'll be uh, grabbing some regular basic train uh, tracks just to make sure that all of this is connected and it's not actually complaining about anything but i assume i need at least one connection to actually spawn the trains so we're just gonna flatten the train here at first and then just smoothen out the worst of the edges i created and just get it connected up basically Okay, it's, uh, it's not my finest work, but uh, you guys are used to wonky train infrastructure by now, I guess. Let's just get this connected up. That's going to uh, hopefully make it all worth it. Let's see, we've got a passenger railway line tool, and we'll just add a main line. How many outside connections? We've got a single one to Kevin, which sounds pretty Welsh, and I probably uh, butchered the, the way to pronounce it, but... Uh, Let's just get this going. We're going to pause. I don't think I can actually change the train type that's being used. Now that I'm using a custom rail depot, I think that's one of the uh, like, yeah, that's one of the uh, uh, restrictions, I guess. Uh, so we'll I guess we'll go for we'll try we'll try one train to start. I mean, it's a pretty small place by now, so I just want to make sure this works. Otherwise, it's a really nice depot. Uh, and the actual train that it it opted for is uh, is actually pretty nice looking. Cool. Although if uh, this is to be realistically UK, then uh, eight quid or whatever this is, eight dollars for a train ticket is probably not not realistic. It's pretty expensive in uh, in real life. So we're gonna go for fourteen and see how much use we'll have. So we're obviously gonna need a bunch of additional services if we really want West Britain to be a thriving, healthy town because we don't have any medical care, we don't have any garbage pickup, and so on and so forth. But we're going to wait a bit with that because I want to do a bit of zoning at first uh, because I'm pretty interested in seeing just how zoning is going to work uh, with this super wonky zoning layout, especially as we are moving up the hill and getting closer to the to the to the church up there. Uh, and one of the other reasons I want to zone is that this pack has six dedicated zones, which is just amazing. Now, we're probably not going to be using the medium density housing, uh, uh, neither the high density housing zones and probably not mixed use either uh, this one because we're using we've we've already plopped those down, right? We have created our city center. Uh, but the medium density terraced housing we might use a bit of and then the medium density semi-detached housing uh, has some really wonderful looking assets as well so we're i'm basically just gonna give this a go i don't expect it to look super pretty before we move in and add in you know some some trees and whatnot but i just want to try it so i'll be adding a few of these medium density semi-detached in a uh, close vicinity to uh, to Whisperin's urban center, so to speak. So maybe something like like this, basically. That's maybe we'll try this one, but I think this zone might look a little awkward. We'll add we'll add this and this as well, and then I'm gonna go for some low density detached housing uh, for the rest of it, basically. And this is going to be very interesting to see how this all pans out when this gets, when this gets built. Uh, I do have a demand mod that makes sure that things are just going to build really quickly. So we don't have to wait for it. Uh, but it's definitely going to be interesting. And I think we might want to do some of this stuff as well. I might do some custom builds here instead, but for now we're starting with this. I'm not filling this up because I actually want to create like a small forest here with some paths, like a recreational area as kind of the barrier on this part of town. 
Uh, but let's just hit play and see what will happen. All right, so this is how it looks without us doing any modifications or changes. And it's obviously not, it's not perfect, but it's not too bad either. And I mean, it's very much the way I make the road layout that is causing some weird restrictions here and not so much the actual zone, right? So it's, that's very much on me. Uh, we might do like a few adjustments. So for instance, we have an area like here where it would probably be better to get this key added because then we can uh, rezone this as it's facing this lane here. Just gonna go for UK. We're gonna go semi-detached, I think. Just let that develop. That certainly looks a little better. Uh, but other than that, I don't think I'm going to add all that many changes. We could could grab uh, this little road here, break that up. That is going to allow for an additional building. Uh, so there are like a few steps we can take to just kind of break it up a little, make it look uh, a tiny bit better. Uh, do this and this, that certainly helped. But other than that, I mean, for a zoned build, it's looking, it's looking all right, especially with such a wonky road layout uh, obviously what's going to really change all this uh, would be adding in some trees so i'm just gonna try that we'll see how it looks and then we'll decide on whether it's better i do some manual plubbing uh, but as i've mentioned before i want to become better at zoning and then if it looks wonky i want to be better at just trying to add some trees and some small details to kind of just you know cover it up and kind of get around it like that uh, so we're going to add a pretty thick patch of trees uh, for starters and then move in with anarchy and add in some trees on their own to just kind of make the tree cover a little thicker. So I've been letting the simulation run for a little bit so that we're seeing uh, a few level ups, which is creating more variety in the type of assets we're seeing. Uh, but what a difference adding the trees and bushes really make. I mean, it's obviously not going to compare to manual plumbing, but it did take one tenth of the time. So I think I'm going to run with it. Uh, but now that we have uh, let the simulation progress a bit, we are starting to have some issues with the lack of uh, some of the other basic services that we don't have yet. Fortunately, as we saw in the beginning of the episode, there's plenty of service buildings uh, in this uh, UK pack. So going by this uh, ambulance issue here, maybe we should just build a medical clinic or a hospital even. Uh, we'll open healthcare and death care and filter for UK and we have two wonderful uh, variations here. We have a smaller medical practice with a patient capacity of 150 and two ambulances. Uh, it looks like this. It's a bit of a more contemporary modern look. You know, it could look like we were built during the 70s or 80s, uh, usually during decades where uh, money spent on building a public institution was a little tighter because if we compare it to the fully fledged hospital, uh, then this building is uh, looks to be a little older, at least I would say, and it has more distinct features and is obviously a little nicer. So while this hospital is complete overkill for Whispering, I think I'm gonna build it anyways, because it doesn't have to be a hospital to us. It could be uh, anything it could be a prestigious school or anything like that as well or maybe it's just uh you know a very specialized high-end hospital that people from across the country actually come to uh, to visit uh or across the commonwealth uh now i know i designated this as being like a forest or a wooded area but i think i'm actually gonna try and place this out here Maybe we'll just angle it like this so that we have as much of the building exposed to some great views uh, out from the bay. Alternatively, we could place it up here even and create a make this a wooded area uh, so that it's actually really close to the to the school down there. Uh, yeah, I guess change of plans in the last moment. We'll do that. So I'm just going to free place it. 
uh, so that I can really just place it how I want to. Then we'll just add a straight uh, alley segment here just to, I want to make it somewhat symmetrical at least. We just want to make sure that we have the free uh, entrances and exits to the parking lot all taken care of. Then we might make uh, a slightly fancy uh, setup here. Just having this uh, this little loop in place. And then from the very center of it right here, we are going to just make a straight road uh, with a connection just like that. That should provide the power and the water and the, all that good stuff. Uh, and then, of course, we need this to designate some parks, you know, a, a landscape surrounding this. I think I'm going to use this custom ash. Wait a minute. Gravel pedestrian path, maybe. I'm just going to see how that looks. Uh, yeah, I think that looks a little better not having a paved option here. So uh, I will just be adding some pretty wild uh, paths here and there. Uh, try to adhere a bit to the contour lines, but generally just kind of make uh, an interesting design. I want to make this a large recreational area that uh, citizens would uh, use as well as, as patients, of course. Because this hospital definitely seems to have uh, this uh, philosophy that we used to have while developing uh, hospitals throughout much of the developed world at least. And the idea was basically that if the hospital is aesthetically pleasing, if it has a nice nature and park grounds on its premises, that is likely going to affect how people heal and recover. And I think uh, since then it's been scientifically proven many times over that that is actually something that matters. But uh, I guess uh, as a paradox, modern hospitals look like total crap. And the hospitals built during the 80s and 70s and 90s throughout much of Europe at least look terrible. They're literally big concrete blocks. And I know that's a cheaper option, uh, but while it may be a cheaper option in like upfront costs, there's a, I think it's a good question to ask whether it's cheaper in the long run if people need to stay at the hospital longer and take up a valuable uh, bed space. But we're getting uh, slightly uh, philosophical here, maybe. Uh, just uh, I'm just thinking out loud. And I am probably going to use better builders or two. I don't think I can get rid of like... Oh, I can actually can actually get rid of just like some individual segments here. Um, although probably not the surface, but I could just, uh, you know, adjust that. But I think I think this would be fine. So if we are to detail just a little bit, why not get a few additional nodes added here? And then I'll just make like... A bit of a special design here that's not symmetrical, but doesn't matter. That's okay. And then we'll just have a path leading down here. Sort of like this. It's a, it's a bit of a wonky setup, but I mean, I'm not trying to spend too much time detailing this up. Anyways, we obviously need some big, beautiful trees everywhere now. Now that looks pretty nice. Obviously it has some fantastic upgrades and they're fairly simple once again, just like with the school, which I really don't mind. We have two uh, extensions we can add, each adding a hundred extra patient capacity, uh, but they, they're they probably a little too much for, uh, for Whispering. So I'm just gonna showcase how they look so that you have a general idea, but I would much prefer just to keep uh, the standard version because then we have all of this detailing like this small recreational area as well but otherwise if there is something to you know recovering faster due to being located in a beautiful place uh, this hospital would probably be a good way to try and study that
Now, just going by the pop-ups, something else we'll need is a police department because we have a crime scene with no patrol car dispatched. Let's just pause once more and bring up the police and administration menu. And I already have selected the single police station we get with this pack. Uh, so I'm actually gonna break with my previous plan and actually develop alongside the road here and then we'll just keep this forested. Uh, so uh, because I want the police station to be fairly close to like the inner city, the inner city, it's such a small village. Anyways, I want it to be here is what I'm trying to, to say. And it got placed a little wonky, so we're gonna grab it with move it, control H and let's see. Oh, there's actually quite a bit of elevation here, so I guess that kind of makes sense. I might just be a little cheeky and lower this a little bit and then just lower the general police station a little as well. Uh, it's not perfect, but the cars... Sh oh, wait. There you go. The cars should be able to enter and exit without much issue. Uh, we've got two upgrades, a garage extension and a cell extension. So once again, quite simple. And I think I might want to add the garage extension. Uh, it makes the building look a little denser, if anything. And then we are going to grab the low density detached housing, I think, zone. Or should we have a few semi detached for starters? I think I want a few semis to just develop around here and then we're just gonna go low density along this entire stretch and they just look wonderful okay so the forest area here is going to be a little special and i don't know how realistic it is for the uk because it's actually based on a policy we've had in denmark so around 100 years ago or something like that uh we did a bit of reforestation in Denmark because, believe it or not, we had less forests than we have now and we're one of the least forested countries in Europe as it already is. Uh, but there was an effort to reforest some areas, but back then the decision was to mainly base the reforestation on pines and spruces. We're just gonna use spruce here. Uh, this is a policy that I think we've kind of regretted today in Denmark because we're actually starting to reforest these spruce areas because they just make the ground very uh, sour, I guess, and they don't really promote all that much biodiversity. They pretty much just cover everything. And uh, yeah, so we're starting to reforest reforested areas, which uh, is as ridiculous as it sounds, but... Uh, the ridiculous part is the mistake we made originally by just planting spruce and nothing else. Uh, it's not so bad that we're now trying to reforest those areas to actually promote some biodiversity and trying to desperately establish a bit of Danish nature again. So, like I said, I don't know if this is a mistake that has been done in the UK. I think they've actually done it in Norway as well, uh, but it's a very Danish thing. So. We will have what used to be a farmland, this large plot here. And then about 100 years ago, maybe 80 years ago, uh, it was to be reforested, uh, but it's pretty much just spruce. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> not the most interesting uh, forest area to traverse or utilize, but uh, there's a Danish mistake in my British build. And then also characteristic for these areas are some pretty basic paths that uh, really don't inspire all that much. But uh, I guess you'll have to take what you can get if you need uh, a forest experience in Denmark. Uh, anyways, uh, I think we're going to add some housing just uh, alongside this road here. Uh, but that's going to be it. We're not going to steal any more of this forest area. And it seems this zone is probably aligned to Poplar Lane is perfect now i'd say we're getting closer and closer to detailing downtown west Bryn, but before we get that far we still don't have any industry and i wonder how many jobs we actually have we have an unemployment rate of 44 percent almost which is really bad so we'll just pause here and then i have a bit of an idea because 
I want to add a ton of farms in this general area so that we have a complete like rural upland right next to the town. But I also want the industry out here to be specialized in exporting grain, I guess, from the farms. Uh, and the really, really cool thing is that the aforementioned uh, Tigon Rail Infrastructure Pack has some very, very specific uh, train stations for cargo trains that we can use that are specialized. For instance, we have this medium train agricultural station diesel, which is a train yard for handling the import and export of agricultural goods. And as you guys can see, it has a very manageable footprint. So I think we're just going to place that right out here. Yoink. And then obviously, since this is meant for diesel trains, we're going to need the unelectrified uh, uh, train uh, tracks here. So let's just see. I need the regular double unelectrified. And I'll need to just upgrade uh, this segment here. Maybe even this one, but it doesn't really matter. I just don't want any catenaries alongside this segment. Uh, and then we're going to get the connection going. Let's see. 180 will turn like this and then just get both of them connected with... I think it's this one, right? Connection here and this connection that should work obviously we need uh, a road up too just to ensure that we have and the proper connections but i figure we can go with like something very very simple a simple two two lane road just to cover and move out here like that uh then maybe we should actually just grab this uh, village road here for the uh, connection to town enable some control lines although it's not exactly Super hilly here, a straight segment, a bendy segment, and then a segment to closely follow the train tracks. And just a regular connection, I say that, but we probably need a decent a decent roundabout here for the, uh, for the cargo traffic. I think they would appreciate that. In fact, we probably have too few roundabouts all in all, but I'll have to keep that in mind. And then I think out here we could probably do with a few extra of these. Uh, I have these custom suburban alleys after science. Just add a few of these so that we can actually also place some industrial stuff out here. Because I don't know how much uh, in terms of jobs this one provides. Uh, not necessarily a whole lot, right? So I think we're just going to cross the tracks here. And try and add in a bit more in terms of uh, in terms of industry. We might even zone it since we are already zoning stuff. So what I'm going to just do is place down uh, a few of these uh, parking lots at first. Uh, manually place them, and then I'm gonna try and zone some industrial stuff see how that actually looks, how that works out. Not all that bad. I'm gonna remove the chimneys. Uh, I think something that is uh, better when you just plop them is that they won't they won't just grow and outlive. Uh, if you specify that and plop the growables, which means you only have to remove the chimneys once. If there even are chimneys in the assets you choose. Uh, but when you remove the chimneys, it looks pretty good, I think. Uh, anyways, we should now be able to get this connected and get a functioning cargo line going. Or a cobble even. So let's just move all the way out here. And get that connected. Probably just want to ensure that we only get a single train, for starters at least gonna assign three we are gonna go for two then and let's see how that works out and i mean this is uh, supposed to be a kind of a port facility so with that in mind we probably need a, a very obvious um, pier right here so that the uh, so that the ships can uh, actually come grab some of the uh, 
some of the grain or whatever other in the uh, sorry agricultural good we are trying to export so i'm just gonna add i'm gonna try and use this very very uh slim symbol pathway here to uh oh that's gonna cause an issue isn't it and we're just gonna do it the old-fashioned way then and to do a manual alignment and we have our little train moving in which is really really cool and let's see if this is gonna work i'm gonna turn this area into a keyed segment as well as this one and then we'll do the terraforming and we might even place uh, a ship here Actually, we're definitely placing a ship here. Uh, can I lower this? <laughs> yeah, I can. Let's see. I should have a cargo a ship as an easy to use prop version. Uh, there we. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a single placement. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Um, so let's just get this placed, uh, align as good as I can. Come on. Oh, come on. There we go. We'll place that right here. Go in to move it and elevate it. Maybe even move it a little closer so we don't have uh, an easy view of the upward cliff side here. Then I'm going to select it and I am going to lock the elevation that ensures that it just stays exactly where it is because otherwise I find I can have some issues that when I reload the save uh, the ship is going to be at the, at the bottom of the ocean basically. Uh, but I mean that is a very very simple port in general uh, but I kind of like it. I think we're just going to call it the West Bryn Docks. Trying to use the district tool as much as possible because I love having the like individual demographics and statistics for each area and it just adds a lot of character that you have you can see the name of different areas so West Bryn Docks. Don't worry we're gonna add some detailing later because what is all this agricultural importing and exporting infrastructure worth if we don't have any agricultural economy uh, here in Whispering. Uh, so that's what we're going to add. Uh, I think the first thing I want to do is just add a bit of um, a low density housing alongside some of these rural roads at first because it's going to be uh, maybe a little tricky to kind of add in uh, afterwards uh, when we've added in the, uh, the farms. So we're just going to add a few housing units, uh, pretty large like zoning sizes because there's obviously plenty of space out here but the idea is basically just to get uh, some uh, rural houses placed before I start adding in a ton of farms. And for the farms, I'm going to use some uh, custom textures extensively. And I have a bit of a trick you guys can use when you are doing custom farms because I see quite a lot of... Uh, I see people adding in the custom uh, textures next to a an actual farm in game instead of just overriding the default farming texture so you can actually just make the actual farm bigger and then just use a custom texture on uh, on parts of it or a custom surface sorry so in retrospect i'm not sure what i just said made any sense um because i've yeah i don't know uh, try to do too much at once I think so I'm just, just gonna try and showcase it instead okay we have a grain farm here which I am just going to place down and try and take up a lot of space here I'll fill in the blanks with some trees and what I pretty much just meant was that if we make a really really large farm area here we can just uh, colorize some of it with a custom surface so that it doesn't all look like the vanilla farm so if we do like this then instead of making room to colorize here or paint with another surface we can just do it on top of this to completely change the look of the farm 
for instance we have these uh crop rows here which are absolutely fantastic so if i just find an edge here and we make sure we don't have any snapping on and just move all the way down here and just kind of override the existing super boring farm texture as well as i can at least it doesn't have to be perfect it's you know farming areas don't have to be perfect up close at least not for me uh they just need to provide a certain aesthetic then we zoom out then this area is actually functional because the farm is you know it's big so that should provide more workplaces and stuff like that and of course something we can do is we can uh, remove the fence here i don't really see that as a necessity uh, all right let's get some more farms in place and of course another added benefit of uh, applying a surface on top on, on top of the actual farm is that if you start spamming trees uh, they're going to not be placed on top of this because it's it's a functional part of the of the farm So we've uh, now got a handful of pretty nice distinct looking farms all of which with some custom services painted on top and it gives the impression that there are more different or more separate farms here than there actually are which is uh, perfect because it just takes less time now i'm going to make this area pretty forested uh with some natural grown forests whatever that is so we're gonna uh, go for, let's see, we'll add some birches, apple trees and alders, maybe even chestnuts of all different sizes. And then I'm just going to go ham and see how that looks. And as I mentioned before, the cool thing here is that we're not going to, uh, we're going to be able to just spam with this massive brush because since it's all a real farm, then even the custom surface isn't going to be covered, which is perfect. So we're just going to start painting with the brush and then I'm going to add in a few trees uh, alongside the like borders of each of these farm fields to kind of separate it a bit additionally. That is very, very cozy. It's actually kind of the first time I've created an agricultural district like this, but it did not take a ton of time and I'm very, very happy with how it looks, especially from afar. Of course, if you if you zoom in, you can kind of see that it's uh, it's a little rough around the edges, but otherwise I am a big fan. Uh, so I designated it as a district. I called it Uplands. Really a lack of something more creative. Uh, if you have a better suggestion, please let me know. I should probably rename Whispering Docks as well, because there's like a single dock for agricultural exports. Otherwise, it's just a generic industrial area. But yeah, my creativity wants more. Um, but I think we're getting closer and closer to sort of a complete build. So... Um, 
so I can't postpone the uh, the inner city detailing or the dock detailing uh, anymore. So I'm just gonna take you guys through um, what I think is gonna be a pretty simple approach that is hopefully going to add a a lot of like visual value to this area. So for the surface selection, we actually have some proper UK themed surfaces uh, within the, uh, the this tiles category that we can use. And I've just kind of laid out a few of them here. I want to keep it somewhat simple and I might even mix it up a bit, but I actually really like this one. It's uh, it isn't too bright or too dark. I think it's it's this one here which is grabbed from the sidewalk corner at uh, Margaret Street and Monastery in Dunfermline, Scotland. <laughs> very, very specific. And I'm just going to try and we'll enable some snapping, see how this how this pans out. Uh, try and maybe actually cover up much of these sidewalks as well and see how that works. That's definitely going to take a bit of time. Uh, and it might look a bit wonky even so it's uh, it's gonna be a bit of a, a bit of a test here but I think most of the roads while the angles aren't completely uh, straight between the roads when they intersect the actual roads are pretty pretty straight I think um, so let's see I am probably going to override most of the tiling that is actually part of the buildings and then if I can just add, a, a, you know, create a bit of distance here, or keep this open rather, we will still have some of the actual surfaces that are part of the buildings poke through, uh, which I would want. So uh, it's really going to be a big test. See how this looks. Uh, <clears throat> well, I mean, it really highlighted uh, an issue, I guess, with how this row, uh, sorry, this building right here is aligned. And uh, let's just drop that down a little. Uh, that certainly looks better. Uh, otherwise, I'm very pleased with how that looks. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw on some music, I guess, and just blast through this as quick as I can, because it's, uh, it's gonna be a little boring.
Okay, so when I started adding in more suburban development, I was like, no, 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 stop. What are you doing? Stop. Get it wrapped up. Uh, because this has just spiraled completely out of control, as with most recent videos, uh, which is pretty crazy. I mean, I should know myself by now, but uh, I've been having a ton of fun, but I'm definitely not going to be able to make it for the four o'clock uh, embargo end. So this is probably going to release uh, a little while after the UK pack has released. Um, anyways, we did get a ton of detailing done. So I've actually kept it rather simple here in the inner city. We added the surfaces, uh, these wonderful custom surfaces. But just by adding these, which admittedly does take a bit of time and a bit of manual alignment, uh, adds so much extra character to the town. So instead of just using too many props, I just kept it to some of these simple trees. And obviously you can just continue detailing to your heart's desire and get a ton of like chairs and uh, storefront items and all that stuff placed if that's what you want but uh, i want to keep it relatively simple get as much bang for the buck as possible and i think services and decals really help with that uh, and uh, surprisingly i also managed to detail up the whispering dogs quite well i think so as you guys can probably see or hopefully can see uh, the look i went for here is a place where there used to be a little more industrial activity than there is uh, today i think the train even perfectly symbolizes what i'm trying to uh trying to say it has okay i guess it doesn't carry any cargo but there's only a few uh cars here uh, with with something uh, in them because it's it's seen better days these are manufacturing jobs much of it has been outsourced and replaced by service sector and office jobs uh, so we have some empty lots here where there used to be industrial buildings but overall i'm i'm actually very happy with how this i think it looks pretty realistic although it has uh, a few oddities obviously and i mean functionally adding the industry and the farm fields really helped with unemployment because we actually have a pretty good supply of open positions currently that's not to say that west Britain is uh well functioning i mean we have a massive deficit so if i were to try and balance the economy here it would be very challenging but as this started to draw out i continued having to ask myself when am i ever done uh, but i guess that's a bigger question when are we ever done with our cities i might do a follow-up episode here in whispering because it's been a ton of fun working with this and i just I really love the autumn aesthetic we've managed to achieve here and uh, and I think I, I think I feel Whispering is as cozy and posh as I'd hoped to uh, before I actually started the town. Uh, so if we were to dive into additional episodes here in Whispering then please let me know what you guys would like to see. Do you have some uh, ideas that would be very fitting for a UK build like that or like this sorry I would be very interested in hearing. But that is going to be it for this potential first installment of Whisperin. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and all the support, the comments, all the nice feedback. It's uh, I, I feel so privileged. I can get it can make my day just reading comments, basically, which is a pretty fortunate position to be in. And of course, a massive shout out to the content creators helping us get a hold of these region packs here. Uh, they're just game changing. We're three packs deep now and each and every pack has added a ton of value to the game. I don't see how you can think anything else to be honest. And this UK pack in particular bringing a ton of low density housing units among all the other cool stuff. That's just something we've really been missing uh, to not forget the church as well. So really bright future for cities too. At least I feel that way. I'm gonna find, uh, sorry, gonna shoot some final cinematics. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit smashed by now, I guess. I've been, I've uh, been at my computer for like ten hours now, and I, it's been several days with this wonderful build now. Uh, but yeah, final cinematics. Thank you guys so much for watching. Goodbye.